or good morning, or good evening, depending on your time zone. Hello and welcome to our Certificate of Bank Treasury Risk Management Information Session this afternoon. Afternoon here in, um, in, in the UK anyway, I'm in Surrey. Wherever you are, welcome. So what we're going to run through today, very briefly, just a short session that uh, gives you some background on the BTRM professional qualification. If you have any questions, uh, when we get to the end, uh, please simply type them in to the chat box and I will do my best to address them. Okay, so let's proceed. Before we do, of course, where are my manners? My name is Morad Chowdhury. Uh, I will be uh, talking you through, taking you through the session this afternoon. So here we are, BTRM. Uh, this slide deck is sometimes presented by other members of the faculty, which is why the first line talks about the, the, the qualification being devised by myself. I'm not usually in the habit of referring to myself in the third person. <laughs> but uh, it was set up by myself in partnership with uh, World Business Strategies, WBS, who had previous experience as a conference and training company. We have been uh, uh, bringing... Uh, the BTRM to the marketplace since the very first cohort uh, kicked off in October 2014. And the, the reason, the, one of the biggest, the big driver of the BTRM was simply, from my perception, a lack of a professional qualification, a graduate level, so take it to a study to some depth, graduate level professional qualification for treasury practitioners, treasury risk and finance practitioners in banks as opposed to corporate entities, non-bank, uh, non-financial corporates. So hence, that's why we set up the BTRM, and uh, we're pleased to be able to see it grow from strength to strength ever since that first cohort six years ago. So first of all, why the BTRM? I mentioned my personal driver for it, but if we take a step back, we're, we, I'm sure we are all reasonably aware that asset liability management as a discipline is a, uh, is a core one of all banks. It's, it's one of those parts of finance and banking, it's a part of finance and banking that every bank has to master, has to get on top of, has to make sure it has a sound ALM discipline. It's not like some parts of finance that uh, some banks get involved in, like for example being a market maker in exotic derivatives, uh, compared to other parts that uh, every bank must master. It's like the, the engine or the wheels of a car as opposed to the air conditioning or indeed the refrigerator. For those of you who ever, <laughs> I, have, I personally have not owned one myself, but uh, I've had the privilege of being driven as a passenger in a car that had a small refrigerator in the back. So ALM is very much not the refrigerator of the bank, it's, uh, it's the, 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 the engine and the wheels. A real, folk, a real key focus, something that all of us on the faculty and on uh, the, the administration are uh, concerned with, is to make sure that the course is very practically useful. It is very much practitioner-led, practitioner-developed, and practitioner-orientated. This is not, uh, not that I mean this in any pejorative way, an academic qualification. We lay great standards on academic robustness and uh, minimum standards to, to enable it to be counted as a level seven graduate level qualification, uh, certainly here in the UK. Uh, but its content, its focus, its drive is all about being practically useful to students in their day job. Uh, our, our ideal and this is the feedback we're always looking for, is for a student to learn at a lecture one evening uh, a, 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 a piece of information, some aspect of ALM, which he or she can then take back to their day job and actually apply the very next day. That's very much our focus. And whenever we receive feedback like that, we know we're pretty much uh, on, the, on the right course. So it's practically, it's, the, it's the, the emphasis on practical relevance, illustrated through real world examples, practical uh, real-world examples, case studies, illustrations that are non-academic but actually real-world and which bank balance sheet managers must, uh, uh, must deal with, must apply in their, own, in their own jobs. So how uh, might the BTRM benefit you? Uh, I like to think that any kind of education, academic or practitioner, professional or otherwise, will benefit any person who's taking it in some way, but more specifically, First of all, it's practical relevance for you to apply to your day job. It, um, the faculty is uh, composed, uh, is comprised all of practitioners, current or former practitioners. So we are bringing our, our experience in banking and finance to the table whenever we present. And um, they're all, as I said, they're all, as the slide says, they're all highly experienced. We do have continuous support. We have the 
student forum, an online forum where any comment or question can be posted of any kind and uh, we guarantee a reply within 24 hours by a member of the faculty. In fact, what we have been pleased to see in recent cohorts is that everybody gets involved. Uh, a student, either a past or a current student, will post a question or comment or query and the replies will come not just from faculty but from other past or current students. So it's a, it's, a, it's a much more involved and developed conversation on the, on the student forum or uh, faculty and student forum. And we also emphasize lifelong learning. We have uh, a part of the forum that is for all alumni. So you can carry on posting questions and comments and queries and observations on the forum and every person who has either taken the qualification in the past or is currently studying for it will see that question and can get involved. So we're, we're really keen on building a global international community of former and current students and faculty, all of who can continue the debate long after they have finished the formal study program. So who are the faculty? There's myself uh, and uh, very, very pleased to be here. We have our head of faculty, Chris Westcott, a former colleague of mine from Royal Bank of Scotland Group Treasury, a man of many years of experience in banking and treasury, uh, recently at NatWest, uh, uh, a peer of mine as a divisional treasurer when we were at RBS together. Uh, our deputy head of faculty is Edward Bass. Uh, he's ex Lehman Brothers, so he's certainly been around the action at some point. But in the last 10 years or so, he has been in academia at Middlesex University and is currently at the University of Gibraltar. The remaining members of the faculty are all current or former practitioners across all aspects of balance sheet risk management experience and practice. Uh, we have some senior members of uh, globally systemically important firms represented right there. Uh, in, uh, in that slide in front of you. And they all bring their own expertise to the table. Uh, we're, we're very keen on having uh, a genuinely diverse faculty, uh, one that is internationally diverse by nationality as well as by experience. So, and uh, it's always a pleasure to work with, with our faculty, uh, all of whom are committed and energetic and uh, take a very great pride in, in, in uh, transferring knowledge, in knowledge transfer to the to, uh, two students. Small, just a snapshot of the type of person who has been a student in the past or currently, the type of roles they have had. We are pleased to see everything from the C-suite. We've had students who are CFOs, CROs uh, of banks as well as more junior. I've never seen a complete starter on the BTRM, you know, someone who's been less than three or four years in banking, but that makes perfect sense. Uh, we do emphasize this as a graduate level qualification. Uh, the most benefit will be derived from students who have had some experience, let's say at least three or four years, if not more, in banking and wish to advance their knowledge and learning with a professional qualification. We're pleased to see the increase in student numbers gradually uh, each year, and we're hoping that uh, that continues. Global profile, again, something else we're pleased to see. We have had students from 58 different countries at one time. If you look at the student base ever since cohort one, they represent physically located in 58 different countries. So it, it is a genuinely a global reach. And uh, we, we recognize this by not emphasizing any one particular regulatory jurisdiction whenever we present. Given the faculty's experience, you may find there are some examples that are more relevant to the European Union than they might be to other jurisdictions, but we don't concentrate just on the UK regulation or European Union regulation. We emphasize Basel III, the global guidelines, set of guidelines for bank regulation, and we give examples from Europe, the UK, Southeast Asia, the Middle East, and North America. So we're very, very, pleased, of, we're very pleased with our global reach and uh, it's something we, we always recognize by not emphasizing any one particular jurisdiction whenever we present the program. We, 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 we emphasize the, the, the universal regulatory requirements as uh, published by the um, regulatory guidelines, I should say, as published by the Basel uh, Committee of the Bank for International Settlements. And what sort of firms have been represented? If you look at that list there, you can see that they range across the spectrum. In terms of size, we've got some very large institutions there, globally, globally systemically important banks, as well as some very small institutions there. We have consulting firms, we have central banks, we have regulatory authorities. Uh, again, very pleased to see the wide diversity represented by the students on our program over the last 11 cohorts, and indeed now on our cohort 12 program. Uh, it's, uh, there's no, um, again, this reflects to us 
that this is viewed as a a qualification that is globally relevant. There is no emphasis on one jurisdiction or one operating model for a bank or on uh, the public sector versus private sector. It's very much about the universal discipline of asset liability management and balance sheet risk management as is relevant to every bank in the world. Obviously, depending on the type of bank uh, we are looking at, their, their interest in balance sheet management and ALM will differ. There will be de detailed differences. But the universal language here is that of balance sheet management and ALM, and we're very pleased to see this represented or exhibited in the wide range of firms that have sent students to our program to take the qualification. So uh, how, does the, how does the journey begin? Well, first of all, there's these sorts of things, uh, an information session or an open evening in a post-lockdown world. We hope to uh, restart those in person back in London. The lectures are delivered in London, although this year they've been all delivered virtually. But right from the start, the program was a global one. It was available to be taken online, so there was no restriction on what time zone you were in because the lectures are presented live over the internet, over the WebEx platform, but they're also recorded. So if you're not able to watch the lectures live at the UK time that they're being delivered, because in some jurisdictions that could well be the middle of the night for you, in fact, one of our faculty who moved from the UK to Southeast Asia still has to get up in the middle of the night to present his lecture at 5.30 p.m. UK time. But for you as a student, you don't need to worry about that. You can always watch the recording in your own time and at your convenience. So this is a program that can be delivered, can be taken, uh, anywhere in the world, and the timing is to suit you because the lectures are all presented live. You can watch them, sorry, they're all presented live, but they're all recorded and can be viewed at any time. So first of all, information session, apply online if you're interested. You will then receive the, the training materials. Uh, so there are three course textbooks, which I'll just illustrate in a minute. There's also the student handbook. That is the hard copy or e-version if you prefer. Um, a uh, handbook of all the material of all the lectures so all the the syllabus program is summarized in the handbook individual lectures of course are the lectures themselves which are presented with powerpoint slides in the traditional manner so the course material is the powerpoint slides but you also have the student handbook uh, we like to s summarize the handbook as the the minimum that you need to to be familiar with to pass the exam but of course the lectures build out that material into much greater depth so having registered, you receive the full set of course materials, including the textbooks and the student handbook. We then have 23 lectures. Uh, by the way, that, that isn't the full number of lectures. We have 23 evenings on many of those evenings. In, in fact, most, I think only, maybe three or four don't have, only have one lecture. The remaining lectures, there's always uh, there's two lectures presented by two different people. So actually, there's something approaching 40-odd uh, lectures in the program, but 23 evenings of lectures, so in other words, 23 times 3 hours, uh, 3 times 23, <laughs> 59 hours of, of, um, of uh, formal teaching, uh, and then uh, these 23 lectures are split into five different modules. At the end of each module, you have uh, an online test, a multiple choice test, and at the end of the whole program, you have your formal written exam, now delivered um, other than the City of London, where it's a traditional paper-based exam in an examination suite. The examination nowadays, as a response to COVID-19 uh, stress event, uh, is to sit the exam on one day you go worldwide, but within that day in your time zone, um, at your laptop. So that can be at home or indeed at work if you wish, or wherever you wish where there's a connection. It's, it's, we've, called a, we've got a virtual invigilate, invigilator system for that. So that's the journey, registration, the lectures, the materials, the faculty forum, the online discussions, and then the examination at the end of it. And that's what I summarize here. What, how is the program delivered? So we have the dedicated online student forum that I mentioned, the live lectures, which are, of course, recorded and available for you to view at your own time, the materials, the slides for each lecture, always illustrated with genuine real-world examples and case studies. Uh, there is always sample templates and policy templates and spreadsheet models available, made available where relevant. Uh, and then during the course of any program, we will always throw in at least one or two to the ad hoc webinars, for example, the regulatory update webinar, uh, which is an update of latest pronouncements from regulators since the program began, because regulators the world over are publishing quite frequently. So to keep up to date with them is almost a full-time job. So uh, we always will throw in uh, one or two ad hoc webinars during the course of a 
program on topics that we consider of relevance and important to students. And then finally, there is the lifelong learning library uh, from the website, the, the working paper series, the thought leadership papers, and uh, from your own forum uh, discussions uh, ongoing with other, other alumni and current students. So I've got a few slides uh, that show the, the course outline, the syllabus, a pilot summary. So we've got the five modules that I mentioned. There is one lecture that is called the primer. So of the 23 lectures, the first one is a, is a primer. Uh, and then we have 22 more lectures split across five modules, grouped broadly into these topics, balance sheet risk management, treasury operating model and governance, strategic LM and financial markets, liquidity risk management, and capital management. Within those modules, you'll have standalone lectures thrown in, which don't have their own modules. They don't fit into any one module clearly. For example, the operational risk lecture is in module five. The hedge accounting lecture, macro hedge accounting, which is more and more important, an important topic for banks of, of large and small around the world, that it actually sits in module two, because it's a subject of its own right. But uh, broadly speaking, we split them into those five modules. At the end of each module, you get an online multiple choice test which you need to pass all five tests need to be passed before one can sit the exam and then we have the written exam the diploma module is optional passing the exam grants you the title or the holder of certificate of BTRM to obtain a diploma it's a dissertation based project uh, which of course uh, once you pass the exam you're perfectly entitled to to undertake And then the next few slides throw the individual lectures in detail. So starting from lecture two, lecture one, as I mentioned earlier, is the primer. Uh, starting from lecture two, if you look, we have a couple of lectures on asset liability management. One lecture all on its own covering Basel III, or I should say now Basel IV, although that's not the formal designation. We mean Basel III final form. So a lecture all on its own on the Basel III rules, including update, which we refer to as Basel IV. Uh, more lectures on ALM trading and hedging. Then a discussion of uh, ALM operating model, treasury operating model, uh, ALCO asset liability committee. That is my personal favorite lecture on the program. I deliver that one myself. <laughs> uh, and also, and then uh, within this module, credit risk, ALCO and its interaction with credit risk management generally. And then module three, strategic ALM and financial markets. So uh, the traditional treasury space, capital markets, bond markets, securitization. And then we have thrown into module three, a separate subject, recovery planning and and resolution planning, the treasury finance and risk functions of any bank around the world that follows Basel III rules, are, all three of them are closely involved with the with two regulatory requ regulator required submissions, the recovery plan and the resolution plan. So we have a separate lecture addressing those. Uh, we then also look at the credit rating process. The reason when I first devised this syllabus back in 2014 was uh, in my past experience, I've found that for smaller banks, often the credit rating process is coordinated with the tre by the treasury function. Uh, you know, when, when a bank is uh, entering into getting a credit rating with the, with the, with the three main credit rating agencies, yeah, the Moody's, S&P, and Fitch process. So that was the reason uh, that lecture is in there because often it, it's a treasury responsibility. Module four, all about liquidity risk management. Probably not a coincidence that this module has more lectures in it than any other. Liquidity risk and funding risk probably being the most important risk that a bank has always got to manage uh, adequately and be on top of. So three lectures on liquidity risk management, one standalone lecture on funds transfer pricing, delivered by someone who is from the Brains Trust, Treasury Brains Trust of Commerzbank Group Treasury. Uh, I always find uh, whenever I've spoken to anyone who worked at Group Treasury and Commerzbank out of Frankfurt, uh, they were worth listening to. And uh, our faculty member there, Dr. Engelbert Plassmann, is, is the past master in FTP. He presents lecture 17. We then look at yield curve, internal funding curve, interpolation methods. One more lecture on liquidity risk, including the liquidity adequacy assessment process, the ILAP, uh, and then carve out topics within, within liquidity risk management, including intraday liquidity risk and asset encumbrance, and then a whole standalone uh, lecture on collateral management, which is closely connected with liquidity risk and funding risk. Collateral management, the impact of central clearing counterparties for derivatives, and also uh, by, uh, continuing bilateral margin rules. So module four, uh, as important as any module on the program, and as I said, probably uncoincidentally has more lectures associated with it than any other, any other module. And then finally, module five, capital management. So two lectures on capital management, balance sheet management and with respect to capital. 
and also the ICAP, the Capital Adequacy Assessment Process Regulatory Submission, uh, and a separate lecture on reverse stress testing, uh, which is part of the ICAP process. Uh, it's a distinct discipline in its own right, and that's delivered by uh, another one of our very high-flying faculty members, Professor Dr. Michael Eichhorn, who's very senior at Credit Suisse Group, um, based here at, out of London. Uh, and then the last section of the program actually is two, operational risk, uh, delivered by a former uh, uh, alumnus of ours who joined the faculty. We're always very keen when former students who have obtained the the qualification with distinction then join the faculty. Amitab, uh, who presents that lecture, is one of those. And then uh, I round off the program. Having started the program on lecture one, I'll round it up with, with principles of policy documentation in the last lecture of the program. Policy documentation is an important subject in its own right because there are so many policies these days in banks that require board approval and are sent for the information of the regulator. And so having a standard approach to, to drafting and approving policy documents in a bank is is probably something that's, uh, that's, uh, worth, uh, that's worthwhile. So those are the five modules. I've hopefully built out the content of the syllabus in a bit more detail there for you. What are the three textbooks? The main one is principal banking. That's the core text. Whenever you see a reference to, in any of the slides, to the core te text, that is the principles of banking. Uh, there's also two other textbooks you receive, the uh, anthology, which is, has updates on materials like ICAP and ILAP, as well as a large number of templates and spreadsheet models and policy documents on its associated website. And then uh, because those two books don't really address the module, uh, is it three or two? Forgive me. <laughs> the module uh, three topics of uh, capital markets, securitization and bond markets and money markets, we've got a third textbook there as well, fixed income markets, to cover off those topics in detail. All... Um, uh, all course materials, the student handbook plus the textbooks, are available either in hard copy form or in ebook form, so electronically or physical hard copy. It's entirely up to you as a student which one you like. So when you register for the program, the administrators will ask you, do you want your textbooks and student handbook delivered uh, hard copy or in ebook form? And it's entirely your choice which version, you'd, which format you'd like it in. Just mentioning a couple of the sponsors, the Wiley Prize is, is awarded to each, each, the highest performing student in each cohort. We've had that uh, quite early on. I think it kicked in cohort two or three. We're very pleased about that. It's a, it's a material prize, you know, books in your hand, <laughs> from Wiley Finance Publishing. The highest performing student is awarded the Wiley Prize. And we're pleased that we have uh, accreditation and endorsement from uh, a leading professional body here in the UK, but has global presence, the Chartered Institute for Securities and Investment. They have endorsed uh, the BTRM, and it's part of their CP. It's, it's eligible for their CPD. Uh, the BTRM, by the way, counts for over 300 hours, uh, just over 300 hours of CPD if you complete the course. There is the 70 odd hours of formal teaching. The rest is what's called self-directed learning, but you would be assumed to have undertaken that amount of study when undertaking the, the, the online tests, the reading around the topic, and the exam. So this counts for a considerable number of CPD in any one year. And a couple of other uh, endorsements as well, one from the Financial Risk Institute, and as I mentioned, it's already globally CPD certified. So I uh, don't necessarily want to take my word for it. Uh, here are a few words um, from previous students about what the BTRM has meant to them. Uh, again, wide range of students and backgrounds here on slide 21 and on slide 22. I'll leave you to read those at your leisure. But we're very pleased to see people of, from different departments working in different banks. Or in one case, I believe it's a consulting firm, actually. Hold on, is there a quote there from Walters Kluwer? I thought there was, possibly not. Maybe, that, I've, maybe I've read that somewhere else. But we're very pleased to see this wide range of uh, firms represented, wide range of roles represented, money market dealers, accounting, on the valuation side, so uh, model risk. It's really it's pleasing for us to see these endorsements come um, from the students themselves. And the one at the top left, I will direct you specifically to that because that's precisely the type of endorsement we would like to receive every cohort. Uh, if I just quote this, this gentleman who was previously with Santander, he's moved on to a challenger bank in the UK since then. Uh, I really like the way that one will learn something in a lecture and go back to the office and apply it next day to the day job. It was that practical and relevant to course for practitioners. If you ask me personally, uh, I, I couldn't ask for a better endorsement from a student than what Mr. Hassel has, has, uh, has said there in that endorsement. So very pleased to receive that one. 
Okay, that's a, I did say it was a short journey, just 25 minutes, but uh, I'm certainly in no hurry. Does anyone have any questions or comments on the, any of the content or indeed anything at all that they would like to, to address to, to us? If so, please simply type it in. I'll stand by for a minute. No. Okay. I guess it was fairly clear and answered all your questions. <laughs> thank you. In which case, thank you very much for, for uh, jo joining uh, me this afternoon and uh, my host here at the BTRM. Thank you for joining us. I hope that did answer all your questions. If you have any follow-up questions, do, do feel free to send through uh, through your regular contact or indeed to our inquiries at btrm.org email. Um, just again, just to thank you again for your attention this afternoon. Uh, my name is Morad Chowdhury. I would, uh, it would be a great pleasure to welcome you onto the program at the next uh, cohort, cohort 13, which starts in April 2021, so not that long away. Uh, and of course, uh, we'll need to have, we would have made some updates and modifications to the syllabus arising out of what banks have been doing in response to this year's market-wide stress event, the pandemic stress event. So uh, we always like to keep it up to date and um, Hope. And uh, while there may not be, there, I wouldn't expect material change to the syllabus. I would certainly expect some updates uh, on what's been happening as a response to 2020. For example, one of the update lectures we put in ad hoc is LIBOR transition. As, uh, as no doubt you will all be aware, LIBOR is disappearing at the end of next year. There's been a stay of execution for US dollar LIBOR, but the other currencies are all disappearing next year. And that has some practical impact, greater or lesser, depending on the type of firm. Uh, on banks, so uh, that's the type of update we throw in as well as we keep the syllabus continually uh, relevant and up to date. Okay, thank you again. I'm going to wish you good afternoon or good morning or good evening or good night, depending on your jurisdiction and uh, your time zone, I should say, and hopefully I will see you soon on the BTRM. Thank you and, and goodbye. <laughs>